Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com bar inclinada schedule. برنامه های ما شامل زبان های بسیاری است. از این وبسایت دیدن فرمایید suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Don't think that I don't know what you think inside. And even if I don't know, heavens know, you, I, all of us are transparent in the eyes of the universe, in the eyes of God and the heavens, even low heavens, astral heavens, they do know what we think, and especially higher heavens, they know everything about us. That's why they can help us. Please keep watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic. Alexis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Marhaba means hello in Arabic, the official language of Bahrain. My name is Ali. The warm-hearted Bahraini people love you for saving the planet by being vegan. The Kingdom of Bahrain is a group of islands in the Persian Gulf, located between Qatar and the northeastern coast of Saudi Arabia. Among the country's wonders are the 400-year-old Tree of Life, which has remained verdant and healthy in a desert area with no obvious source of water. Another natural wonder is found on Haver Islands, a protected area where the rare Socotra cormorants arrive each to start new families. The shallow waters around the islands also provide perfect feeding areas for the gentle dugong, a vegetarian marine mammal that loves to feast on underwater seagrass. In contrast to the natural environment, its capital city Manama is modern and cosmopolitan with its captivating skyscrapers. One feature that stands out is the Bahrain World Trade Center 1 which integrates large-scale wind turbines into its sustainable design for energy efficiency. The people of Bahrain honor traditional values such as love and respect for family. Care is guaranteed in the nation's constitution for less fortunate citizens, with special programs in place for the elderly. Bahrain is also known for its comprehensive and free public education system that offers classes to students from elementary grades through university level. We feel privileged to share a glimpse of diverse and fascinating Bahrain with you, peace-loving viewers. In Allah's grace, may you be blessed with happiness and success. For decades, Supreme Master Ching Hai has illuminated our world with her divine teachings. A fully enlightened master, she imparts the Kuan Yin method of meditation to those desiring to immediately discover the God nature within, to achieve in one lifetime eternal liberation from the cycle of transmigration. 
The Kuan Yin method has been practiced by all enlightened masters, such as the worshipped world honored one Shakyamuni Buddha, the worshipped son of God Jesus Christ, the venerated master and philosopher Confucius, the venerated Lord Krishna, the venerated master and philosopher Lao Tzu, the venerated Lord Mahavira, the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and many more. Supreme Master Qinghai emphasizes that if we always remember God, render selfless service to others, and follow the laws of the universe, we will reach our highest potential as humans and truly understand our purpose on earth. An extraordinary living example of compassion, she lovingly and regularly sends material and financial assistance to refugees, the homeless, natural disaster victims, and others needing relief. Supreme Master Qinghai respectfully thanks all special individuals, organizations, leaders, and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Qinghai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness, wishing you the best. Supreme Master Qinghai receives love and recognition from various organizations, media, governments, individuals, and many awards such as the 2006 Gusi Peace Prize, considered the Nobel Peace Prize of the East, the World Spiritual Leadership Award in 1994, the Mahavir Award in 2008, February 22nd and October 25th, both proclaimed as the Supreme Master Qinghai Day, an honorary citizen of the United States, etc., and has been honored throughout the years with numerous other awards and accolades for her outstanding philanthropic and humanitarian deeds. Etc. We apologize for not being able to show many other awards and honors 
for lack of space and time. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thanks all special individuals, organizations, leaders, and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness, wishing you the best. A true voice for our beautiful animal friends, Supreme Master Ching Hai promotes the peaceful, loving, plant-based diet and envisions with humanity's awakening to the sacredness of all life, a tranquil and glorious all-vegan world where animals and people live in respectful harmony. Her initiatives included alternative living flyer distribution, the international vegan restaurant Loving Hut, vegan food companies, vegan fur products, Supreme Master Television, as well as writing and speaking to influential government and media leaders, participating in televised conferences on climate change, etc. Whether we are aware of it or not, her efforts have had an enormous influence on global awareness of the animal-friendly lifestyle and how this benevolent way can bring lasting peace among nations while saving our planet from climate change and disasters. Supreme Master Ching Hai has traveled worldwide and held discourses with the public and her disciples on a variety of spiritual topics. Today, we are blessed to present the insightful conference entitled We are transparent in the eyes of the universe, part 2 of 3, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on December 22, 2019, in Taiwan, also known as Formosa. Even with our education, we can survive with our hands, with our work, with our own labor, yes. So there is no need to depend on people. The more dependent you are, the more you don't feel good. You will feel lowly. You will feel more, you know, like not yourself, not your dignified self. I'm not talking about housewives or mothers who still need to take care of the children at home. No. You are doing work as well, because being a housewife is a lot of work, like 24-7. Yes. I'm not talking about the SMTV, you know, who work in-house or anywhere, because they are doing their work. Even if they don't earn the money, they are doing their work. They earn in a different way. I'm just talking about people who are trying to take advantage of others' goodness and Generosity, that is a no, 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 no. You lower yourself desperately and terribly. You have no self-respect, no self-esteem when you do that. You should always do something to earn your own upkeep. I'm not talking about the people who live in, in the ashram and take care of the ashram and not earning, I mean, income from outside. I'm not talking about these people. They are also working. They keep the ashram clean, you know, or tidy, or you know, whatever they do in the ashram. That is different, okay? Even though they don't have income, but they are taking care of the ashram, of the place where everyone else comes to feel comfortable and welcomed, yeah, and be at ease to meditate, yes? Like the retreat people this week. I'm not talking about the people who stay in the kitchen and just cook every day for everyone, even though they don't earn any official income, but they are working. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. And also, I'm not talking about the husband who, instead of going out to earn money, his wife goes out to earn money and he stays home to take care of the kids or the house, you know, washing dishes, washing clothes, tending the gardens, cleaning the house. That's also work. Housework doesn't excludes men. He's doing his job. With, he does it well, you know, I mean, devotedly doing his best. That's also work, hey? 
We just all have to do something. We just don't deliberately live off other people's uh, generosity and good heart. That is no good. That creates bad karma for ourselves. The next life we have to come back with or without initiation to be a slave, to work day and night, to work three, four, five jobs and not earn much, etc., etc. And people will not have respect for you because of the karma you accumulate this lifetime or whatever lifetime. No good. If you have to depend on other people, you really will feel very aggressive inside. And outside you have to talk sweet and tell lies sometimes just to make other people feel the one who you depend on feel good, feel flattered so that they continue to help you or keep you or whatever. And that is no good for your dignity, for your conscience. You feel you feel terrible whether you know it or not. Mostly you will feel it. You will know it. And that's no good at all for a dignified person when you can do work yourself. I'm not talking about truly handicapped people who cannot do anything anymore. I'm not talking about them. That's the karma they have to bear. But if we are still able to work, then we have to do work. I mean, concentratedly, devotedly, truly respect that work and do it every day as if this is the last thing we do before we die or the first thing we ever do and can never do it again. We have to revere our job. That is what we call karma yoga in India. It is even a kind of yoga practice. We just incorporate all that into the Kwan Yin practitioner's lifestyle. That's why I tell you, we have to do charity, we have to go out and help people, we have to do our job 100% devotedly, reverently, as if it's an honor given to us in this lifetime to repay the kindness of all beings, not just this world, but visible beings, invisible beings, animals, insects, even the worms, we own them. They air the earth so that people, the farmers, can do farming work. Yes, even the little bees huh, who pollinate the trees, without them we wouldn't have that many fruits and food that we have right now. So now people realize that and they begin to raise bees, to protect bees now and forbid many herbicides or insecticides that harm them. They don't just harm us, they harm those little tiny beings who are our helpers, who are diligent workers for our survival, for our food. My God, we are all beings on this planet. Everything you see or not see, we owe them everything. We also, of course, the angels who take care of us, even though they are in the shadow world, they are taking care of us. They help us in time of trouble, even though we don't see, we owe everyone. Everything that we see or not see. So whatever work we do, we have to do it concentratedly, devotedly, and reverently. Not to talk about helping the master with something with maybe a water tap or water filter. Or you have to keep the master alive and healthy in order to help you, no? So it's not really a favor you're doing me. You do it only once to help me with the future or connecting the water, but I'm doing it often for you, many years, and continue. I don't say anything, and I do it with all my heart all the time, all my love, all my heart, all my devotion to you. So we are helping each other, at least. Not saying that must rescue you or anything, five, six generations, nothing yet. We're helping each other. I remind you of some good teachings hmm, that I know from heaven or from the past master books and explain all things to you, help you to be a better being. Huh? So we're helping each other. So you're not doing me a favor. So don't do it in such a careless and disrespectful way and harmful way to the body and mind and psychological and psychic beings of the master because you accumulate very bad karma for yourself. The master may be harmed 
temporarily or even might be dead, but your karma would never be able to be washed away if it's a grave offense. Everything you do, you do it for yourself. Please remember that. Even a bad thought about Master is also you doing it to yourself. Today I don't come out, and many people don't feel happy. And all that karma will be upon you, not on the Master. The Master cannot clean that, because you have already been taught right and wrong. You have to do your homework. Every school, every learning has an exam. And the people who don't pass the exam have to either stay in the same class or get out of the school after repeatedly not progressing. Similarly, in the spiritual practice, there are tests. And if you fail, then you have to do it again. And if again, then (laughs) you cannot be in the assembly. Nowadays, it's like that. Not like a long time ago, I let people keep learning, learning, keep repeating, keep, uh, you know, improving. In the school, you cannot fail many times. Here, in the spiritual school, is the same. This mountain area, this ashram that you are in right now, is a very, very sacred place. Very important, spiritually. So, if you don't keep your mind and and heart and speech pure and try your best to keep it, then you will be out sooner or later. Either you out yourself or something happens that you'll be out. If you are selfish or arrogant or trying just to grab things for yourself, for your own benefit, even the blessing for Master, you will be out. Here, you have to be always selfless, pure in speech, thought, and action. In Sihu, it's similar, but it was more tolerant. Here, it's different. Because this place has been acquired, bought, by the sweat and tears of many disciples, and also Master of Finance. It's not an inexpensive place. This is quite expensive even for me. My money is used for so many different purposes and for SMTV. So every month I have to spend a lot. Even sometimes some financial things coming by different ways, very little, and we still need that to repair every little thing that we have in the ashram. You know, when we first came, everything was kaput, even toilets, pipes, septic tanks, the roads, the roof ties falling off. Yeah, many things. And it will continue to be like that because everything in this material world will corrode at one time or another or be damaged. Even the cave that I love to stay in in the beginning, it's eroding now, and it's dangerous for me to stay inside, so they kicked me out. <laughs> I mean, practically saying, Master, you can't stay there anymore. They even hired the expert to come in to look, and it's, it's all eroded inside. That's why the water leaking in from inside and from underground and etc. And sooner or later, it will maybe collapse. I'm just worried about all the beings in the lake that uh, the erosion may harm them, but I don't know what else we can do right now. Uh, Maybe uh, demolish it. I was thinking to repair it just for souvenir, you know, to keep it (laughs) for your your children to to see in the later generations or something. The place that Master lived in and worked in, sleep in, ate in (laughs) with the dogs. (laughs) But it seems like it will take a lot of time to be able to rebuild it. And I'm not sure if it's worth it. So I'm still thinking uh, what to do. Even demolishing it might cause some damage for the beings in the lake. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I have to study more about that or just let it be. But at the moment, we cannot let anybody visit it inside in case it collapses any time. 
Well, my dogs told me that before, but <laughs> I was thinking, oh, never mind, it still looks good. <laughs> but then they made another cave for me, you know, a more modernized and more livable. So maybe I will, I will use that instead. Yes, just for your sake, I keep myself healthy and alive. So please don't be jealous of me. You have no reason at all. Everything I do is for you, for the world, for the universe. Even though you don't feel that way, even though you don't see it that way, even though you don't think that way, it is like that. I have no reason to tell lies to you because I don't want anything from you. That's logical to you or not? Yes. Good. Suppose you think that I tell you lie, this lie, because I want you to worship me, to stay with me, so that I feel like, oh, I have a lot of people worship me. Then you have to think again. Why do I always screen out hundreds of people at a time even? As you know very well, at least 1,000 people are not allowed to come to New Land at all. At least for what I can think of right now, maybe more. Yeah? Mm. So think about that, okay? I have no reason to lie to you. If I really wanted more disciples, more people to worship me, to be crowded by people, to feel like a big shot, then why do I burn so many, huh? Understand? Yes. Is it logical to you? Yes. All right. So please think about it and banish every sort of negative tendency to envy me or to wish me no good. Even in thinking, it will have bad effect on you because I can protect myself. But I don't want you to continue this way, okay? Whoever that might be. Don't think that I don't know what you think inside. And even if I don't know, heavens know, you, I, all of us are transparent in the eyes of the universe, in the eyes of God and the heavens, even low heavens, astral heavens, they do know what we think, and especially higher heavens, they know everything about us. That's why they can help us. If they don't know, how do they help us in time of trouble? If Master doesn't really know, how can she come to help you when you have accidents or when you pray? She comes. She helps you. Even if you don't see, you feel it and you know the result. So you are very transparent. All of us are. So even if I'm bad, heavens would know. So I don't dare. <laughs> even if I want to be bad at all, even if I wanted to lie to you, I don't dare. I know better than that. I don't practice for myself, benefit, nothing. For my family even. You know, I treat my family the same as you. Even if you want to treat my sister, especially VIP lifestyle, no. I say, no, please don't. So that they don't feel too arrogant, okay, to other disciples. They have to earn it. They cannot just be treated like a privileged group of people. When they didn't earn it, they have to earn it. They have to be worthy of that. And even if they are, there's no need for them to be treated special like you have planned to do. I don't want that. I want them to be humble, normal, practicing well, and enjoy their normal life, normal treatment, because otherwise other people will get jealous also, and the negative energy will be no good for them. Not just the, for them to be arrogant or anything, even. Or even not jealous, they treat them too special, and they will feel too proud. Then forget to be humble, forget to practice. To be treated special out in the public is a kind of curse. You see, people want to harm the Buddhas, even though he never did anything bad to anybody. All he did was preach to help people, to elevate, and meditate it. When well, begging even, and even wear it had to clothes, not even wearing luxury clothes like my design I have to wear now, or even jewelry or anything. 
Beloved viewers, we appreciate your company for today's episode entitled We are transparent in the eyes of the universe, part 2 of 3, on Between Master and Disciples. Coming up next is Selections from the Life Divine by Shri Aurobindo, Vegetarian, The Human Aspiration, part 2 of 2, on Words of Wisdom right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May you develop and cultivate liberation of the mind by loving kindness. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.